Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Scrapman, and this is... We have explosions! Finally, explosions have been released into the test branch, and these are the explosive canisters that explode all sorts of things. So in this episode, we're going to be putting them to the test and seeing exactly how they work and just having some fun experiments playing with explosions. Uh, so one of the first things that I was curious about is are seats explodable? And as you can see, yes, yes, they are. But explosions aren't the only thing that is present in this update. Apparently, uh, there is now knockback from uh, spud guns on players. So let's actually test that out really quick. So let's see what this does. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's not going to be annoying in multiplayer at all. All right. This is going to be great. All right. So we've got two different types of explosive canisters. Obviously, we have small ones and we have large ones. And uh, they respond to being hit by spud guns. They respond to it being exploded by each other. And they also respond to impact, apparently. So in this episode, we're going to test out just what kind of damage they do and to what. Apparently, different materials like metal concrete wood are supposed to have different amounts of damage so let's do a test on um how much damage these things do to different materials and in what way so we're gonna get a whole bunch of materials out and we're gonna see what kind of impacts or what kind of effects that they have so here i've got all the different layers of materials so what i'm gonna do is uh, i'm gonna use a small one put it right in front of each of them and we're gonna see if this actually uh, explodes all of them or if it does varying amounts of damage to them. I'm not really sure what to expect. So let's start with the cardboard. I'm expecting it to just explode all of it pretty much. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. All right, so there's the amount of damage of the cardboard. Let's see what this does to wood. All right, pretty much the same to wood. What about concrete? All right, it looks like it looks like the range is actually a little bit less. See, there's one block less there with the concrete. Let's see what it does to metal. Oh, okay. So it looks like the materials don't affect whether or not they get damaged, but um, the range in which they get damaged. So now I'm curious, if I place this the same distance away, is this like partially damaged now? And if we explode again, it'll be damaged more? Okay, it doesn't look like it. So actually, a good way to test this is why don't we just do this and have all four of these increase the amount of damage that's done, then we have an answer. It looks like the material changes the range on which the explosive canisters do lethal damage. So that's interesting to know. We're going to put a big one now, and we're going to see if the big one does any more damage here. Oh, yeah. Big ones do more damage. That makes a lot of sense. I didn't know it was going to be that much more damage, though. Holy cow. All right, so you know what? We can actually test. Let's do a range test here. So we're going to test how far apart you can set the canisters before they explode each other. Because obviously, if you set them right next to each other, you explode one into the other. And there you go. And actually, I just got the brilliant idea. What happens if I do this? Woo! Look at that. All right. So you can use them to launch players, too. That's pretty cool. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place some uh, increasingly longer blocks ahead of each other. And we're going to see where the chain reaction stops. All right, so here I have them lined up every distance from one up to 10 blocks. So we're going to see if 10 blocks is uh, long enough for them not to explode each other. And maybe it's even shorter. We'll find out. Here we go. All right, so that's 10, 9, 8, 7 blocks. So it looks like 7 block distance for the small ones. So let's replace these with bigger ones. And we're going to test out the distance on the bigger ones. So starting with seven blocks up to 10. For some reason, I think that 10 isn't going to be enough. Let's find out. Okay, 10 is not enough. Let's go even more then. All right, here is a full 16, a full length. Let's see if that works. Okay, so a full length of 16 does not explode. So where's the limit then? So here's 12. All right, so 12 is enough. Here's 14 blocks. Okay, 14's enough, so it must be 15 if not 16. That means we should be able to go there and then just one block in and either this will or won't explode and then we'll find out if it's 15 or 16 blocks. 
All right, it looks like 15 blocks is the limit. So just to confirm, this should cause the other one to explode. This is 14 blocks. All right, there you go. So the small canisters have a seven block range and the big canisters have a 14 block range. So now let's test the impact force. How fast do we need to be going to explode these things? So I'm gonna spawn in my trusty car here and we're gonna have just a giant metal wall. Uh, you know what, let's actually, let's get rid of this. You know what, here's a real easy way to get rid of a bunch of stuff, huh? Look at, oh, this is gonna be great. All right, I am, I am really excited about this. Here we go. All right, well, that wall's gone. <laughs> oh, this is great. I love this. I love this so much. This is gonna be so good. Okay, so now let's make ourselves a big metal wall. We're gonna crash into it. So now what I'm hoping and I'm not sure about is when you shoot them, they have a delay before they explode. Obviously, they like, they, they fizzle a little bit and then they explode. So I'm wondering if we ram hard enough, will they instantly explode or is it gonna be a delay? Because this is also gonna determine whether or not we drop them from bombers. Are they gonna have an instant explosion or are they gonna land on the ground, uh, fizzle up and then explode? Let's go ahead and put a big wall right here. And we're gonna drive into this wall with a bunch of explosive canisters. Actually, just one, just one. And just in case multiple explosive canisters absorb more of the impact, I'm gonna put just one on the front and let's see what happens here. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> there goes the front of her. I forgot that her vehicle is actually gonna explode too. I'm actually a little bit worried that the seats explode because that's gonna make these things even more lethal. All right, so it looks like it fizzled before it explodes. So impact might not be as good as I was hoping it would be. I would hope that when you do a big enough impact, it would be similar to an explosion next to it where it's the instant chain reaction. But uh, this one looks like we actually have to wait a little bit, but let's uh, let's give ourselves some more speed. I'm gonna strap some thrusters onto this thing and we're gonna see if going faster might make it explode faster. All right, we got max thrusters. All I have to do is not miss that portion of the wall. Here we go. Uh, uh. It actually worked. I honestly didn't expect that. All right, so the force of impact makes a difference in how quickly it explodes. For some reason, I thought that it, that wasn't gonna make a difference. I just thought enough impact was just gonna make it explode at the same rate no matter what, but uh, that actually worked. All right, so now the question is, is the force of gravity enough to make it explode like that? So we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna attach some to our craft, our hovercraft, our VTOL, and we're gonna drop some from way up in the air and we're gonna see how that goes. All right, here we go. So we are up in the bomber and let's see what happens when we drop these. Now, different heights might have different effects, but let's try from, I don't know, whatever this height is here. All right, here we go. Drop them. Eh, eh. Uh-oh. Okay, that's gonna make bombing challenges a little bit difficult because they are not going to explode right when you drop them onto the ground. But let's try, let's go even higher and see if that changes things. It might change things, but I'm not too sure. And that height already was kind of pretty high for bombing, uh, in my opinion. So going much higher is gonna be a lot harder to like gauge your targets and stuff, but let's see. We're just gonna go really, really high really high at least so that we can still see the ground though all right we can still whoops there we go oh boy okay oh 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 no oh no it's gonna explode ah! <laughs> okay and the one that hit the ground too the one that hit the ground also uh it also exploded on impact so yeah you just gotta get high enough if you want your bombs to explode uh when they hit the ground Okay, the next question I have is what about a catapult? How are bombs gonna work with catapults? And here we have a catapult that I think I built this during a speed build challenge. So uh, let's just fire an explosive canister and let's see how far it goes. And then maybe we'll put like a wall in front of it or something and then we'll see how that goes. And uh, yeah, let's just see how viable catapults are. I'm worried that we're gonna have this issue. This issue is gonna keep happening where they don't explode on impact. Uh, so we'll see how that works with this. I forget how to use this thing. All right, well, this catapult doesn't work quite the way it's supposed to anymore, does it? Yeah, those are supposed to block it from going up, but uh, that's not happening, and that's weird. Let's try that. Ah, there we go, and now we release. Okay, all right, and now it just glitched through. Okay, so it seems like collisions have changed in this update, or at least in some update that happened, because these seats were not supposed to be penetrable like that. 
All right, so I'm a little worried that this canister is actually going to hit our seat up there, but uh, there's only one way to find out. All right, so we're gonna ready it, and now we're gonna detach the canister, and are you guys ready to fire this thing? I'm actually gonna hook it up to the seat again. All right, here we go, in three. It's just gonna explode into us and destroy the whole catapult, isn't it? Three, two, one, go! Oh! That actually worked. I'm very surprised at that. Well, let's try out, let's put a big wall in front of us and see what happens when we throw it up against this. All right, here it goes. Three, two, one, launch. Oh. All right, so that's gonna be an issue for Catapult Wars, I think. Uh, I think that the developers, hopefully in the testing period, because remember, this is on the test branch right now. Hopefully in the testing period, they adjust it so that launch, uh, barrels or like impacted barrels will explode a little bit more easily because if that doesn't explode on impact that was like a direct hit right into it then um it's actually let's test out do the smaller ones have an easier time impacting that could make strategy interesting uh so let's see if this oh why did i delete that seat i don't know why i deleted that seat i needed that seat there what am i doing but that makes strategy interesting where you have to choose between bigger or smaller ones but the bigger ones might be at risk more of not exploding on impact. So let's, uh, oops. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Okay, I thought it might explode. That was actually really scary. <laughs> this is dangerous stuff we're working with here. This is dangerous stuff. Okay, here we go. Let's see if this one works. I gotta hook up my seat again. All right, I think we're ready up and go. That was not what was supposed to happen. <laughs> so maybe, maybe the smaller ones do explode easier. You know, I have a way to test this. We're gonna attach some explosives to the front of this vehicle, but we're gonna replace the gas engines with electric engines because electric engines have a fixed speed. And what this is going to allow us to do is find out if there is a certain speed that the small canister explodes, and if we find that, then we can test that same speed on the big canister and see if that explodes the big canister as well. All right, so we have the small canister. I have the engine currently on three from the top. I This is actually slower than I expected, so we'll see if this explodes the small canister. Actually, I'm gonna go even slower. We're gonna go two down, so five from the top, and if this explodes the small canister, oh, this is not gonna explode. All right, maybe let's go four from the top. How about that? Is that four? Yeah, that's four. All right, let's see if this explodes. I really don't think this is going to explode the canister. I'm kind of hoping it doesn't because this is actually really, really slow. All right, here we go at a grueling pace. Are we going to explode? <sighs> All right, nope, that's not the right speed. So let's go ahead and ramp it up. Uh, three from the top. We'll back up and then we'll ram this thing at full speed. All right, here we go. Here we go. <sighs> Okay, all right, that wasn't enough. Let's go. We're actually, we're getting, we're getting close to our max speed here. Two from the top. Let's see if this does the small canister. Ah! All right, and there goes our front wheels. Okay, so two from the top worked on a small canister. So now let's test it on a big canister, see if the results are different. Oh, I gotta fill in the wall. Hold on a second. Oh, look at the parts of my vehicle. I didn't actually realize that some of the parts of my vehicle fell off without getting destroyed. That's kind of cool. All right, well, time to fill in this wall and uh, ram it with some explosives. All right, so here's three from the top. If I remember correctly, this should not explode. Okay, nope, that doesn't explode. And I think our explosion for our small canister was two from the top. So let's see if it explodes the large canister as well. Oh boy, oh boy, oh no, oh no. <laughs> There goes the front of our vehicle again. Here, come back here, come back. All right, so it seems like they have similar explosion velocities, but uh, I can't be sure because the engines don't have a lot of control. Oh, there's a tire way over here. What is this doing? Okay, the next thing I want to test out is um, uh, actually Kim from the Discord suggested this, and I thought it was a brilliant idea. Let's do explosive canisters for wheels and see if we could actually drive on them without them exploding. So I'm actually gonna use my uh, normal 
uh, Madge scrap car. And we're gonna see if this actually works with explosive canisters for wheels. And if this explodes, there's gonna be so many parts going everywhere. Oh, this is already just looking absolutely ridiculous. I think suspension is a must for this. All right, hey, here we have it, an explosive wheeled car. Let's see if we can actually drive this thing. <laughs> Where'd our car go? <laughs> what? I'm not quite like that didn't even give me any time. Why did that happen? Hold on. I was it because I turned okay. It wasn't because I turned all right Let's try to go nice and gentle now. Ah, no, no, no <laughs> Um I'm kind of sad that we can't just drive like a little bit Like just just a little bit you know what? Let's try electric engines. Maybe electric engines will give us a slower and more steady uh, input. So let's just try an electric engine here. All right, so we're gonna go minimum, we're gonna go three from the bottom. So really slow. <gasps> we're doing it. We're doing it. We're driving an explosive wheeled car. Okay, how fast can we go? All right, what about four, four from the bottom? Uh, oh, that is so nerve-wracking watching those things like collide against the ground like that. Oh, oh no, that was the cutting. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, so I'm curious, is there anything an explosive canister can't explode? So I'm gonna put a whole bunch of stuff down that isn't like just basic materials and we're just gonna see if anything survives at all. All right, so we have a whole variety of non-standard materials here from engines to barrels to steel beams and girders and pipes and even the Scrapman mugs. Now these ones I'm curious about because these are a modded part. I don't know if they have the same type of damage um, scripting that the other parts have. So let's find out. Here we go. Will anything survive? Whoa, we have some survivors here. So this is an interesting development. Oh. Oh, wait. Oh. Okay, here's something to test now. Let's test, does, do we supposed to have penetrative distance? So for instance, if I stack a bunch of these like this, do does it explode through them or does only the first layer take the damage? Let's find out. Ah, okay. So here's an interesting test. Ooh, ooh I like this test. Okay, so we're gonna put a bunch of materials that are a certain amount of layers thick. So now we're gonna see if the different if the different materials have different categories of how much the explosions can penetrate through them. All right, here we go. We're gonna start with metal. We're gonna see how many layers this big one penetrates through. Ooh. Okay, so how many layers do we have left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that means it penetrated through seven layers. All right, here we go. Concrete. Let's see how many layers we get. Penetrated through to oh, there's a huge difference. So there's one two three four five. So eleven layers All right now wood. I'm actually concerned if any of this is gonna survive. Here we go. Ooh, ooh, what is this three layers one two three? So we have seven layers for metal eleven layers for concrete and 13 layers for wood so there is a difference in the material resilience when it comes to uh, how thick it needs to be to protect some of its, uh, some of the explosions. That is a lot of penetrative distance. Now let's test it. Let's do the same thing and let's test it with, uh, with small, with a small one. All right, here we go. So I've just put them next to the big test. So we're gonna do the small test now and see if the results, see how different the results are. Here is test number one with metal. Ooh, that sound though. All right, so you can see it actually saves three more layers for the small ones. So that means what? Four? So only four layers of of metal. How many layers of concrete? 
So this was 11 minus one, two, three, four, five. So now six layers. Wait, so what does it go? Four and then six? Is that the difference here? So six layers of concrete. How much wood? Here we go. All right, so this was 13 minus one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's seven layers? Really? Only seven? Wow. There's only a one block difference between concrete and uh, wood, but a two block difference between concrete and metal when it comes to the small ones. So it seems like there's a bigger, there's a bigger disparity between the big explosions in the different materials and the small explosions in the different materials. There was only a two block difference between the metal and concrete and only a one block difference between concrete and wood for the small ones. But for the big ones, there was a four block difference between metal and concrete and a two block difference between concrete and wood. So that's an interesting scaling uh, that they have there. Also, in case you were guys wondering, the explosives do not have any connection points, so you cannot trigger them directly with a switch. However, all you really have to do is just put like a spud gun uh, aiming at them. Okay, so here's a test. Why don't we try to see what is an actual measurable minimum height to drop something in order to uh, make it explode? So I don't know what the best way to do this is, but I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna line up a big let's just let's just drop one from up here. Let's just drop the big explosives from right up here and we're gonna see if this causes it to explode. Ready and drop. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh, oh it actually didn't explode the thing. Okay, so that is um what 32 blocks? That was a 32 block height. Let's test uh 16 blocks. Alright, here's a 16 block height. All right, 16 blocks is a no. What about the small one? All right, 16 blocks is a no for the small one as well. All right, so let's go like kind of midway in between. We're gonna like zero in where these things actually explode. Oh, okay. So this is actually like, you have to go pretty high then. Let's try whatever that is. So that's uh, 32 minus two, that's 30. Well, hold on, that's not exactly 30 there. There we go. That's 30. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. 30. 30 is a yes. All right. Here's 24. 24 is a yes. All right, I feel like we already dropped it from here. Here's 22. Okay. So then here's 23. All right. So it looks like 24 is the, is the minimum height. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is the minimum height to drop it from to have it then explode. Look at that. Oh, that's great. So now let's test it with the small canister, see if the small canister has different results. 23, 24. So let's just test, make sure again, confirm that this is the minimum height here that explodes it. Okay, it didn't explode that time. Is it 25 then? All right, we're gonna try 25 here. All right, there we go. So it's 25, not 24. I miscounted on the first one. All right, so let's see if the small one explodes at uh, 25. Okay, small one explodes at 25. Then let's uh, go down to 24. See if it uh, explodes any earlier than the big one. Okay, so they have the exact same velocity requirement, it appears. All right, so this is actually a one-upping our engine test where we use the electric engines to crash into the wall. It seems like they have the exact same velocity requirement because we were dropping it from a fixed point and both of them are exactly a 25 block height in order to explode it. So that is good to know as well. Okay, so now what I really want to do is uh, I want to explode something while I'm flying it. So we're going to fly this thing around and we are going to explode while we're flying because i just i have to see what happens i really i really have to see what happens so i'm gonna put some there and i'm even gonna put one in the back here and i feel like that should cover us pretty well so let's go ahead and take this thing up in the air and uh, when we press the down button we are going to explode so i hope i don't accidentally press it when i don't mean to all right here we go <laughs> you guys ready for this i am like i'm actually really excited for this let's go into follow camera just because it'll be a little bit easier. All right, and it is time to explode. In three, two, one, shoot. Oh, 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 that's beautiful.
That was the most beautiful thing I have ever seen in Scrap Mechanic. Who wants to do that again? I want to do that again. But you know what? I'm going to rearrange it in a way that I'm going to hope that my seat survives so I don't get kicked out of the seat. Okay, so here's the deal. I found the big explosions a little bit too big. So I decided to use two small canisters on each of the front thruster areas. And then two small canisters right in the back too. So I'm hoping that the seat will survive and we'll just kind of like fall out of the sky a little bit. Let's see how this works. All right, here we go. We're just flying along, minding our own business. And then we press the wrong button and oh no, what's gonna happen? <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. Ah, uh, stop it. Look at the, look at the meteors like falling down. I love that effect. Oh, that is fantastic. Okay, if there's one thing I could change about the way that explosive works so far, I would want the seats to be immune to explosives. So that way when your vehicle explodes, you're just kind of flopping around in the seat and like rolling after the vehicle explodes. That would be really great. The other thing I would want to change is I would want the impacts uh, explosions to be more immediate. So that way, like things like catapults and bombers can be a little bit more practical because right now it doesn't seem like they're going to work that well. And also, as far as I can tell, there isn't a single block that is actually immune to explosives. I think making a block that is immune to explosives would be great because then you could actually have some type of guaranteed shield, maybe even use explosions to kind of power or like propel something that isn't just going to get destroyed automatically. So for the finale of this video, I'm going to spawn in just a bunch of my creations and we're just going to create a whole chain reaction of explosions to just explode all of the creations to smithereens. But before I do that, I want you guys to comment down below. What would you like to see me try to do with the explosions, with the explosives? Are there any tests that you uh, would have liked that I did in this video that you want me to see in future videos? I love to do experiments more experiments with the explosions. We've tried wheel car, we tried explosive wheels, we've tried bombers, we've tr we've tested the distances and the penetrative power of them. So what else do you want to see uh, tested with the explosives? Is there, is there anything that, that you are curious on how they function or how they work? And I really actually, I just love that this is like my new favorite method of erasing stuff in the world. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Okay, well, let's uh, let's get rid of the rest of this then just by doing a little bit of that. Oh man, it's gonna be so, Multiplayer Monday is just gonna devolve into chaos. You know, someone's gonna build something and we're just gonna be like, hey, you want you want a few of these? Here, have some fun with that. And then your creation is just gone. Speaking of creations, let's spawn in some creations. We'll spawn in one of these. We'll spawn in my flying pizza. We're gonna spawn in my robber crate stealing vehicle. We're gonna spawn in my toast launcher. Let's actually even detach the toast and put the toast in the toaster. There we go, good enough. Let's spawn in my wings mod plane, which has way too short of a wingspan. <laughs> Why not spawn in the chocolate bunny from the Easter? Oh, that is huge. We're gonna have to put ex explosive barrels all over that thing. This is gonna be an epic finale. Oh, I am so looking forward to this. And let's spawn in this bicycle here from way back in the day on the channel. All right, this is excellent. Actually, the bicycle I think is gonna have to go somewhere a little bit, a little bit closer to the beginning. All right, now it is time to create the destructive chain reaction of our dreams. I'm actually going to put all... Oh, that's not how I wanted to go. I'm going to put them all behind the uh, vehicles. So that way we can watch them explode from the front without the explosions actually blocking our view at all. All the way up the bunny as well. All right, let's go around the back of the bunny. Oh, this is going to be... This is going to be... Uh, this, this is going to be brutal. That bunny is going to get it. All right. I'm thinking things are looking pretty good. This should be a working chain reaction. Oh, I am. I, I I can't even tell you how excited I am. You know what? Let's actually, let's bring it back to us too. So that way we can watch as it travels to the creations. All right. Wow. I don't even know if we're going to be able to like follow it. All right. Are you guys ready for the finale? If you're excited to hit that like button, and if you want to see more explosive episodes like this, make sure you are subscribed. Hit that subscribe button right now. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss a single explosion. Here we go for the finale in three, two, one, go. Oh boy, here it goes. Oh, there goes the bu- Uh oh, oh, boy, here goes the bunny. The bunny went flying into the tree. 
we have to assess the damage. All right, the flyer is just absolutely demolished. I think, what is that? That was the, that was the uh, robbing vehicle. It lost uh, not a lot, actually. Wow, all right, that's, that did surprisingly well. The toaster, oh, here's part of the plane. Ooh, that plane got destroyed, though. Here's part, oh, that did not explode on the toaster. You know what, we have to, well, let's see what damage. That toaster didn't get damaged at all. What's going on with the toaster? Hold on a sec. Oh, there it goes. That I why didn't the concrete explode? There it goes. Okay, something weird's happening with the toaster. I don't know why it wasn't exploding. Uh, some of that concrete wasn't. What is hap? Oh, there's a suspension glitch happening on the bike. Take a look at this rabbit. Oh, the chocolate bunny has been eaten through. He's only got half of his body, just one foot there. Okay, and then we have my favorite. I think is this bike. This bike has to be my favorite destruction. Like, look at that. Half of the wheels are gone, but they're still kind of there. Let's put some more on it and just, we'll see what happens. All right, we're just gonna put some just in various plate. Oh, 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 okay, and go. <laughs> oh, this is a beautiful, this is a beautiful update. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, you've gotta love you got to love how the meteors fall out of the sky like that. The flaming pieces are amazing. Oh, that one didn't explode. There we go. Okay, so I'm just having way too much fun with this mod. I am really looking forward to seeing what kind of ideas you guys have for this because I am looking forward to doing some more testing, some more experiments, and just overall just enjoying myself with this. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It is so beautiful. Oh, one thing I meant to test is um really quick test at the, at the end here. We know it takes one, two, three, four, like four seconds to explode, but does it explode faster if we shoot it multiple times? One, two, it does. All right, and that's the final test of the video. I'm gonna wrap it up here. Let me know what your favorite part was. Leave a timestamp in the comments. This has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.